Let me plug in one more device and then we should be ready. Just like so. All right, now, this is gonna be a fun one tonight. It's gonna be fun tonight. My girls and gals, turn this guy over here. We're gonna be looking good. Welcome to the show, everybody. All right. Big old giant 24 inch by 24 inch canvas. And you can see, it's nice and dry right now. We need to make it wet. In order to make our paint slide and blend across the canvas, we have to have a wet canvas, right? So let's come in here, get all of that clear that we can possibly get out of this jar. And remember, while we're doing this, you gotta tell me where you're watching from and what's your favorite sandwich? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna take my clear or linseed oil that you can use as a replacement, right? I'm gonna deposit it everywhere across the canvas. And that's gonna make it easier to cover more evenly. All right, so as we work this stuff in, ooh, that's funny, I never, I never lock this sucker down. I just kind of set it in there earlier. That would have been funny for that to fall right out, right? Ah, there we go, now it's nice and sturdy. So, we need to get a good even coverage of our liquid clear, and on Monday nights and on Friday nights, I like to show you every single step. So, you can see what we're doing, and you can copy me and come out with the exact same result. That's why we do the tutorials, guys. I had a question earlier today, they're like, am I allowed to sell my painting that I did from your tutorial? It's a very good question, All right? Don't you think? What would you guys think the answer would be? Are you allowed to sell your paintings that you do from my videos? What do you think the answer is? And then I'll tell you what I think. Come over here like this. You gotta let me know in the comments. So what do you think the answer is? Do you think you're allowed to sell your paintings that you've done that are my, they're my ideas, they're my videos, and you copied the video and you're allowed to sell that? Is that what you think? Absolutely. You guys are 100% correct. I don't give two craps. That's why I put these videos out. I want you to copy it. I want my whole timeline to be filled with Paint With Josh paintings, which is why I put these videos out for free so you can go along and copy, right? And if you're lucky enough to sell it, get as much as you can, right? That's what I always say. People message me and they go, how much should I sell my painting for? I'm like, get as much as you possibly can get for it because you don't know when the next time it's gonna be when you sell one, all right? In the very beginning, I was selling mine for like 30 bucks a piece. Just so I could go buy some more canvases, get some more supplies, and keep painting. Now, this one is $299, and that's half off its normal price. So, if you want this guy, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and you can grab it for just $299 with free worldwide shipping. And it's going to be a fantastic one. If you ask me, I'm kind of biased. I mean, they're my, my paintings. Of course, I'm going to say they're nice, right? Now, you can kind of see, if you go back and forth across your canvas, along the whole thing, where your dry areas are, where your wet areas are, where it's thicker in some places versus thinner. And all we have to do is make it the same amount of slipperiness, right? Which is very weird. When you first pull the paint out of the jar, it's very sticky. It's like a syrupy thing. But this, the more that you stretch it out, the slipperier it becomes. So, stretch it out. Get those thick areas, wherever you had it extra thick, and spread it to every other spot. Now, once you've got your entire canvas covered, give it a good once-over. Go that way, go this way. And now we know at least every spot of the entire 2x2 two two canvas is completely covered with our clear. Now, no matter if you're Paint With Josh, or if you're just barely starting out, you're going to put on too much. So, I always do it, and I expect you guys to always put on too much. Now we're going to go back here, we're going to grab a paper towel with a fair amount of pressure. We're going to take the majority of that clear back off, removing all this excess. All right, and if your paper towel starts to rip, you can always fold it over. Right? I like using the Viva brand ones because they don't rip as easily as all the other ones, like Bounty. <clears throat> You'll have like a whole speckled... It'll look like glitter all over the canvas with all the amount of little specks that Bounty brings out, man. All right, now, let's come over here, get the old paint box out, and throw some colors onto this old guy. So, you gotta let me know where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we're probably gonna do like seven or eight colors for this painting. When I do my Aurora paintings, I want them to be super colorful. So, we'll get all crazy 
with some crazy auroras in this scene. But first, I gotta get some paint on the can or on the palette. And once we have enough paint on the palette, then we can actually do a painting. Josh, how about that? Isn't that why people tuned in to see a painting show, not just to see me sit up here talking? That's okay. I'm never ready on time anyway. I don't know why people. Would... At least I turned the camera on on time, right? I was watching the show earlier. She's like, I'll be on at like 4.30. I look at 4.30, 4.31, 4.32. I'm like, is she ever going to come on? Finally, 4.34, she shows up. I was like, oh. See, at least I turned the camera on. If I'm not ready, at least I'm here. You guys know I'm here. I'm just not ready to go yet. So, a little bit of blue, a little bit of that. We've got to have our phthalo green. We've got to have the phthalo green. It's such a pretty, like, oceany, sea-type green that... I use it every time I do the Northern Lights. Every time. Oh, by the way, we're doing Northern Lights tonight. Have you uh, have you deciphered that by <laughs> by now? A little of our sat green as well. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six colors so far. And then we're gonna add our purple. I gotta have our dioxazine purple from our gambling set. Where's that paint? Oh, you're just. You just gotta be difficult when I want to find you. Are you for real? Where's this paint? There's only so many little tubes in this box. One of them has to be the one that I need. Where did it go? What in the goodness and where oh where is my purple paint? I'm freaking out, guys. I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. What do I do with it? Ah! Found it. <laughs> Found it! Okay. A little of our dioxazine purple. It's going to be excellent. And now we'll be ready to go. Stop wasting time, Josh. What are we doing? Let's get crazy, guys. <laughs> now, in order to have all of your colors show through, I'm still trying to get over being sick. Don't ask. In order to have all of your colors show through when you hit it with your white paint, you have to first prep it in the colors that you want to see. All right, so let's just say we're going to wash off our brush so we don't have all that clear paint on it. And then we'll add our undercolors, right? Wash that guy off. Gotta beat the devil out of it all the time. Get it down in there. Now we're going to load it up with some color. Whatever color you place onto the canvas is where your colors are going to shine through. So what if we did like this, and we had just a whole little streak of our crimson paint right here. Now, this is the Gamblin 1980 crimson, only because I ran out of the Bob Ross crimson, and I had to run to the store and get some Gamblin. All right, so we'll throw that Gamblin on here like that. Little bit, little streak going that way. Now, let's put a little bit down underneath as well. Remember, you gotta prep it however you want it to show up. You gotta add that color in there. And the more that you work it out, and the more you spread it, the darker it becomes. It's not so vibrant. That's why they call it a transparent color, because it'll go very dark if you keep it very dark. If you add a lot of paint to it, then it's gonna be very bright red versus very dark. Now, with the same brush, let's go into our purple, our dioxazine purple from the Gamblin 1980 paints as well. And I found it over at uh, at Michael's, we went. I went shopping with London today at Michael's. It was fantastic. She was getting stuff for candles. I was getting stuff for uh, for paintings and all sorts of things. It was a fun, fun time. We should have filmed it. That's what we should have done. Let's go do that next time, London. We'll go film both of us going to Michael's, and then we'll make like a dual video, picking up supplies. Very neat. A little bit of our purple. Got our crimson. Then we got this empty black space. Now, I don't want to use the same brush full of purple and crimson to do our green bits, because it'll make it go brown, and that's not what we want. We don't want a brown aurora. I mean, that's kind of a cool idea, actually, to do like a reddish-brown sky, like I did that seascape the other day, but do like an aurora, a mini. We've done it in blue and green and yellow and every other color. We might as well do it in reddish-orange. It'd be kind of cool. All right, now, wipe, uh, beat the devil out of your brush. Get it nice and clean. Dab it off on a paper towel. Now come over here into our sap green. Gotta have the saps, and the sap is gonna go right underneath the crimson, but I don't want them to touch too much. All right, so don't intermix them too much, otherwise you're gonna have a bit of brown aurora. All right, so we're gonna take our sap green, let's pull it out away from the crimson, down, 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 to sap green town, over here. Boom, 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 boom. Anywhere that you put it, 
that's what it's going to show. But can you imagine that? A little bit more over here, and just so we're not intermixing in with that crimson, we're not going to go too far. A little bit down there, smallest little bit. Now, in with our phthalo green. Now, you can overlap these greens. You don't have to have these greens be split apart. If you kind of overlap them, you make this cool little color anyway. So, a little of this, a little of that, a little of our phthalo green, a little of our sap green, and now this is when we would normally turn on the cameras and be like, hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Who's ready to paint something, right? So let's see what this turns out looking like. We come over here and wash this brush off for the last time. And then we'll start to throw some actual color onto the canvas. So let's see what it looks like. Never know until you get there. So I always say go try something new and fancy and fun. Get out there and try it. See what happens. Now, the more white paint that we add to this canvas, the less color you're going to see. And the more it'll turn back into a black canvas. It's a, it's a magic trick. You just got to go with the flow. Go with the flow, baby. Now, come in here with our white paint, just like this. Remember, this painting is available for sale. You can purchase it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Look for number 1,091. 1,091 paintings. All right, here we go. Remember, we got purple, we got crimson, we got green, and then phthalo green. Sorry, I almost burped right there. Come in with the purpley bit right up here. Ooh, let me come down real... What are we going to do, Josh? Make a decision. Streak it down through the purple... The crimson and the green, you get all these colors. Now we're going to come in here, and we're going to dab up on our brush, creating all these extra bits of thick paint that are then going to streak differently when we hit it with our brush. Now watch, you're looking at this going, oh my god, what has this guy done to this canvas? I'm never watching him again. Trust me, you will. Come in here like this, a little bit of white, a little bit of pressure, grabbing that color, streaking it upwards. Right? The more white that you have on your brush, the longer it's going to streak, the more color it's going to interact with. Look at that. Come down like on the atmosphere, baby. Now I'm going to dab my brush off because it's got all that pinkish, crimsony paint. And when we come over here into our green section, I want it to be nice and green. Lots of pressure. Match that angle. Pull it straight up. You get this. Come down onto the atmosphere. My goodness, you guys. Pull it straight down like this. Every so often you get a couple little streaks that come off the bottom. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, you guys. Then we're going to come at this thing again, whoosh, straight across this bugger. Are you ready? Dab off your brush so it's nice and clean. Wash off your fan brush so it's nice and white. And then, remember, these colors will want to mix and make a bad color. Don't let them mix too much. A little bit of our white, a little bit over here. Let's come down with another crazy purpley bit. Zap! Just wow! Poo -poo. Come down here. Look at all the paint that we deposited. It's no longer on our brush. There we go. Turn that brush over. Make a whole nother streaky bit. All right? Doesn't even matter. Have it come out. Have it come over here. Have it do whatever you want to do because you don't want them all to look exactly the same, in my opinion. Come grab it up like that. Streak it up to the top. Streak it, streak it, streak it. Don't let it touch the next bit of color. Leave a little bit of spacing in there. Boom, boom, and that guy went off that way. Just because we had a little bit of excess color on the brush. It's like X marks the spot, baby. Woo! Come in here like that. Keep dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging like we're painting a dragon over here. On the side, on the side. Oh, man, that's cool. Purple into this pink X over into the green. Get out of town, Josh. That looks amazing, guys. And again, yours might look a little bit different. See, we came in with this guy. Right through the thing again. Come back with that same brush. Come back and grab him up. Whatever color's underneath is what's going to streak up. Get this guy back in here. Ooh. Oh, I love it when it turns to green like that. Get that pinky into the greenish. Not going to let them all touch. Zap! Came down and landed on our atmosphere, guys. Very cool. All the way down from the top through all of them. All the way down. Side by side, bing, bang, boom. That's a wicked aurora sky, if you ask me. You come over here, add a little bit more paint. Come back with the same brush. Streak it up. Oh, baby. That looks cool. That looks stinking neat. Love it. All right, now, we got to mix up a whole big pile of color. If we're going to... Make a big old giant mountain to contrast off of all that beautiful color out there. We've got to go back and cover some of it up. I always say, I had somebody message me, they sent me a picture, and it was just about their sky, and they go, I don't want to do anything else because I don't want to ruin it. You know what I mean? And that's not the, 
It's not the kind of attitude that you want to have. You're not going to ruin it, first of all. You have to cover over some things. Now, let's come in here with a bit of our, our three favorite colors that we like to mix up to create this Paint with Josh Madness mix. The plaque, the purplish blackish color, whatever we're going to call it. It's, we got to come up with a name. I mean, Madness Mix is cool. If, I, if that was going to be it, that's what it would say on the, on the tube. If I had my own paint and I had like a mountain mix, mine would be the Madness Mix. <laughs> be very neat. All right, now, since we've taken all these colors, let's see who knows the answer. Anybody? Anybody knows the answer? Who was that? Gremlin, Conservative Patriot, Red Wing knows, Glitterwix knows, K Wood knows, Kayla, Jen. Bing, bang, boom. Amber Huber over there. Airy, Fairy, Adeline. Everybody knows. Everybody, everybody. Now, let's come in here and mix up Grab up some of that dark mix that we created, flatten it out, scoop it up, and let's just decide. Josh, you're taking too long to decide. Do I want my mountain in the green section or do I want my mountain over in the pink section? That's the question. Now we're gonna have to do this again. All right. We can come way up here. I like all that pink and purple. All right, we're coming here. We're gonna grab up a little bit of our dark color. We're gonna come screaming up into our sky. Boom! boom. Just up top, dropping down all this excess darkness. And when we cover over some favorite parts of our aurora that we had back there, right, it's going to add 10 miles of depth. Right? We come over here and we start to make our mountain a little humpy, a little bumpy, a little over here. Get a little hump day Wednesday going on. Is it Wednesday? No, it's Friday night freestyle, Josh. A little double peaker back there. Maybe we'll have two mountains in this guy. Right? Come back and scrape up all this excess color. We don't need the majority of it on there. Scrape it off, pulling it down, just like a clock, kind of treating the center as the middle. All right, we're pulling away from it, removing all this excess paint that we can still use later on in our painting, right? Now, let's come back. We've always talked about the three P's of paint with Josh. The amount of paint that we put on the canvas being number one. The amount of pressure that we then hit the canvas with, right? Stretching out that paint. How far do you want your mountain to go down? What do you want the shape of it to look like? Maybe it streaks over there like that. Taking this guy, coming off the other direction, and we're over here, sliding down through this whole other peak, but we can't just keep going off to the side. That's lazy. Let's come over here and pull it down, 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 even straighter. Come over and hit over to the side, take our guy over here, and we're gonna slide him off in this direction. And all of a sudden, that whole big giant mess that we had created has now become a floating mountain out here in the night. What's it floating on? Who knows? Who knows? But you can see all of those auroras just got pushed back a million miles from our mountain peak. It almost looks good like you'd have another peaky little friend, but we'll put him down here. Now let's mix up some crazy color. Let's not no, you know what? Let's go, let's go, let's go wintry mountain. Let's go over here. Let's do a wintry scene, okay? We're gonna come like this, a little bit of white, little teeny touch of our Prussian blue, is the blue color that we're using today. A little bit, you don't wanna to have too much. Come down here, mix that sucker up. And it doesn't, don't matter if it get too close to our dark pile, because we're gonna to need to mix some of that in as well anyway. Is that my watch? It's my watch jingling on the back of my wrist back there. I was like, what is that noise? Sounds like one of the dog's collars is coming upstairs. <laughs> okay, come in here, mix up a little bit of our darkness. Gotta pull down some of that dark color because it's going to dull our snowy paint, right? You can't have the snowy paint be as bright as a blue sky in the middle of the day. You want to dull it down to a little bit of a grayish, bluish color. Now, since we didn't wipe off the knife and we picked it up with some blue on it, you can see there's already blue in this white. And all we're going to do is mix it down. And that way, bang, bang. But I love listening to the sound of my watch, jingle, jangle. We know it's not the purest of whites because now we've mixed two little lots of blue into it, right? All it does is make our mountain look a little further away. You don't want to have your pure white all the way off and your farthest away bit, right? Now, we're going to come up here like that, taking on a bit of our white first in this instance. And let's come off the front of our little mountain top and just whip it down. Coming down the side of the hill. You never know where it's going to be. Get a little roll of paint, right? float our hand over the top and just let it go. If you end up touching your knife to the canvas and you know that you're out of paint, that little roll has gone, gone disappeared on us. It's no longer there. Let's go back and get a little bit of our blue. Maybe we'll come off the back side of this guy. 
Just a little touch of blue. We're gonna drop him down in the sheer cliffs that we had. Boom! Right there. Oh, baby. Oh, I like it. Just the smallest little bit, leaving little uncovered areas. And this guy was a real steep, sharp dropper. And we came down and grabbed up a little bit more of that blue paint. We started going off in this direction. We're pulling it down, we're sliding it down, and it's going down, and it's going down. A little glacial pass over here, right? We can continue on with the bluish paint off the backside very lightly. The more caked on that you leave it, the harder and uh, the longer it's going to take to dry, that's for sure. Don't cake it on too much, right? Come back in here, and we're going to eventually end up with our little shadowy hill revealing that we've just taken a bite out of our mountain like that. Come back with our white, just a little touch. We'll be back in here, we start sliding down. Not every piece is going to be totally lit. Right? Not every piece is a paint with Josh painting. Oh, just totally lit. <laughs> ah, what a clown. Wiggle my, my white over the edge like that. Right down here towards our bit of blue shadowy area. Now they don't have to touch. We can come back with a bit more of our blue shadow, cut it right through there. Gorgeous. Now, back to our white paint, okay? We come up in here and get really close, creating these crazy jagged spires that start sticking out like that up into our shadow. We come down here, we plop a whole big chunk of paint up there, and then pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, let it blend down. But all it does is create a new little peak, and then we come down here, maybe an inch or two over, and do a whole nother little peak, right? Just by grabbing up another bit of our snowy white, dropping down into the blue, and then pull it back away. All right, you can go. The, you can always go back and make it a bit brighter here, there, wherever you want it to be, right? And whatever under colors are under, in this case, our green, it's starting to pick up with our white and create a little bit of green highlight colors in our snow. So you don't have to do it initially, right? Hey, just like that, guys. The more we build on this sucker, the bigger he's going to get. Come down here. Start dropping off our shadows on this side. And this is the best part about mountains. You can play with them for just a million years. How far do you want it to go down? How long is it going to take to get down there? That's all up to you. That's not up to your old buddy Paint with Josh. That's up to you. All right, now I'm going to come down, grabbing little bits, little pieces, very lightly, just to extend the color down here so we can make up some misty fog out of that stuff. Got to have some mistiness and maybe just a little bit of light snuck its way over across the back over here. Right? You never know. They're going to be everywhere, but maybe a little light is trying to creep over the side, grab up around the back, and then this stuff we're going to use for our highlights and our, uh, our cloudy mist way back there. Right? So those bits of white I really only use for when we come in and we start tapping at it real hard and creating our misty mountain back in here, right? Because that white will interact a bit more than that blue will. And you can come up and make your misty fogginess just by tapping it with just the top corner of the brush. Tapping it out, creating more mountain that's just too hard to see. Right? You can come up a little bit higher, Josh. There we go. Down in there, over here, tapping it out, tapping it out, tapping it out. Very straight, right? Filling it out that way. Right? And you can always come in here like this and create your little misty, cloudy fog to have a little bit of color to bounce something dark off of, right? But we don't want to go too far. Now, with the very lightest of pressure, you can see I've even hit it too hard over here, leaving all these little brushy marks. It's okay. We go through and get rid of those guys super simply, just like that, right? But very light pressure, sliding up our blue. Now we're going to rotate the brush. You have to imagine you have a double-sided tool, right? You got your palette knife on one side and you your brush on the other side. So if you came down like this with your palette knife, let's take your brush and go up that way, right? came down this side, we're going to take your brush and go that way. Came off of this side, we take our brush and go that way, right? All depends on how you want your mountain to look. Now, well, what about down around here around the point of the mountain, our closest piece? As you can see, we've been hitting it out like a clock, going out this way, turning down, getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. Now we're turning up very vertically, and then off, and then back. And I think each time turning the brush, right? Each time it's rotating as we go back and forth. Now we come over on this side and we start grabbing up little bits of color and we pull it out. Maybe we come down here and we're tapping out little things, dragging out more little bits of mist. Each time we smack the canvas, it kind of spreads our color out a little bit more, interacting with all those colors underneath, right? Little bits and little bits and little bits. And those little bits of white that it picks up and drops down are the perfect amount for some foggy mist 
They hunt around the base of our clouds, right? So we come up here again, start tapping, 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 tapping. Lots of pressure. Lots of pressure on this old guy. Right? Tap it until you like how it looks, and then come back and soften it towards the peak. Just like that. Now and then here we mix up all these little bits, these little brush marks and stuff. Boom, 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 boom. The more white that you bring down, the more color you're going to light up. So be careful about what it looks like. Now. Just what if, just in my own brain, I'm gonna get a little bit more brightness in here. So a bit of my snowy bright color, just to have that bit of fog wrap its way around. I don't want it to look like it's getting lost. So if we brighten it up a touch, come back in here, then it look like we have some more details that are just harder to see. And that's exactly what I want right there. Now, off at the bottom of this guy, guys, what if we did like a wicked lake? I was thinking about putting two mountains in here, like coming at it with this other mountain, coming down into this side like we've been doing. But there's so many colors down here that are just untouched that if we come and smack it with some straight down poles, we're going to get the craziest northern light reflections you're ever going to see. So let's do that. Let's, I mean, you could try to match your, your uh, wiggles if you wanted to. You know what I mean? But you don't really have to do that. We can literally come in here. Let's get a little bit of our white paint onto our brush, just onto the front. We don't need a whole lot. I'm trying to have it be even across the whole front, just like this. Now, if we come down, and let's say our far off water line is way back here, we push hard on it, right? And then we're not gonna try to drag it all the way down to the bottom. Just like that, right? Just pushing on it, dragging it, and letting our brush come away. Just like we do when we push up on the trees and then we pull away, we're kind of pushing down and pulling away at the same time. We come over here, hard pressure, push it down again. Hard pressure, down again. The more that you do with that paint on our brush, especially over here into that green color, woo, baby, it's going to start to look like some far away reflections of our water. Now, with less paint on the brush, because we've already deposited it all, you can go back in and make it soft, and then a couple swipes to the side, guys. You got to do just a few swipes to the side, because otherwise it's going to look too much like our water up here, and if we're going to do that, we might as well go all the way. Go all the way, Joshy. Just like that again. Swipes to the side a couple times. Little baby bits. Now, we could always go back in and add another stripe. Or if you wanted to make them longer, right? you could drag down a bit further. Especially in some places that can be a bit longer than in other places. Maybe if we want our green to show over here. We hit it with a bit more of our white. Just so they drag down a bit more. Right? Not trying to fully cover all the darkness underneath, but that's fire right there. Somebody bring a bucket of water. Oh, we just painted a whole lake. Sorry, we don't need the water. We got the whole lake painted, it's fine. Look at that, guys. All right, now, let's see if we can come in and hide some of that shoreline off in the distance with just a few little trees. We'll come back like this, wiggling down on our dark mix. And what are those three dark colors, guys, that we like to mix up in order to create a very deep, dark color? Oh, guys, you know what I haven't done for a long, 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 long time? Check this out. What if I show you how to do these really far away, really far away little trees? See if we can hit it with this two-inch brush. All right, now, how do we do that again? <laughs> let's come in like this, and let's tap in like just a little far away little thing. Okay, a couple little bits. Maybe we'll roll it down, and it's coming down here. A few little places here and there. We're just tapping them in. A few little things. These are ones that are so far away. But you can't really tell what they are. We know they're trees because we come in like this and matching that angle, just pull up on them the slightest little bit, right? And with those differences in color, not trying to drag them so far that everything looks all the same, right? With these far away little trees way off in the distance on those guys, just so far out there. Now, if we come in with these guys and you can start, probably remember, we're gonna probably have a big tree right here. So let's start over on this side. Pop these guys down in. Now these trees are gonna look much more close than those far away little bits that are way back there, right? Very far away. Come down like this, tapping it down, tapping it down, tapping it down, trying to stay below the mountain, the heavy thick snow. You don't wanna go whip into there. You don't wanna go spelunking and try to get to the cave up here, not through all this thick snow. It's gonna be hard on your brush. Right? And all your trees are gonna turn into a very bright colored gray. We want them to be a dark, blackish color, a purplish, blackish mix. And the more that we tap down, right, the more darkness we bring, 
And you can make a little reflection if you wanted to, okay? You don't have to if you don't have a lot of room or you don't have a, a lot of um, color to spare. Maybe your canvas isn't as big as mine is. You don't have to do the reflective bits. Not everybody wants reflections, right? All up to us. Now, all we did is very sloppily sort of matched what the, the reflection looks like from above, okay? Down into our color. And with that same brush, same two-inch brush we've been using, we're gonna go back and decide where our land was again and streak down on our trees. Right, way off in the distance, you get these little reflections down into the water, kind of covering up a little bit of our roar, but not everything. And then again, swipe them over equally, otherwise it'll start looking all wavy. And some of the times it's cool, but some of the times it's not what you want in your painting. You want them to look pretty close to how they look above. Now, if you get areas that are not as filled in, go back, take a little bit more dark paint, especially around the base where the two colors, where the two meet, where land and sea meet. You want them to kind of look similar in there. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Soft little thing, easy to do, nothing to it, guys, right? Take the same thing at the top. We're dragging these guys up a little bit stronger, dragging a few little bits of pressure, right? And our little tree trunks grow out the top and they're all leafless. They look really cool. Just like that. So you get these very far off guys way back on a mountainside. Maybe they're bushes compared to how big our trees are here. Now, instead of using our big old two inch brush, let's use the one inch brush because, all right. We don't want to cover up too much space and get rid of too many of these reflections, right? So if we tap in here, we're tapping and tapping, and if you're not getting any color, go back, grab a little bit of white, and then just a touch, a little teeny bit. It'll go for a long ways, right? You want to have a bit of mist in between your horizon back there, your shoreline, right? And your reflections. You don't want to be able to tell what's going on. So I like coming in with a bit of our white, going down like that. What's up, honey? Can I go out and hang on with Asia? Put a coat on. Okay. Look, I'm talking about a heavy coat. Okay. It's cold out. A little bit more white over here. Over there. The more you come in with that white and then mix down into little counterclockwise circles, the more it looks like a little mist at the way back of our little painting back here, right? All the way back. Now you don't know where the bottom of the trees are, where the water is, where anything is happening back there until you come in. Maybe we'll get a little of our liquid white, a little of our titanium white, so it's not just pure, straight up liquid white. Come back in here, and then we can decide where we want to have our little shoreline just pop right out, just with a little cut of the knife. A little cut of the knife. Just like that. So simple, guys, right? Take our brush very softly across it. Again, we're not trying to smush our, our uh, reflections too much. And the softer and darker and more further away that you make that, the further away our little shoreline's going to look, right? Very cool. Very cool little painting, guys. Remember, this one is available for sale. You can grab it if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Now, we're going to need to mix up a whole lot more dark color if we want to add some foreground to this painting. Just an enormous amount of dark color that we're going to need. Just enormous, right? Far away little line. Not very thick. It's brushed over many times, so it's very soft. Now, all you regulars have to tell all the new people watching what are the three colors that we mix in order to create a deep, dark, purplish black. The Paint with Josh Madness mix. The, the a color so dark that all the other dark colors run for cover. They run for the light. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Now, we probably didn't mix up enough because Paint with Josh never mixes up enough, and that's fine. But let's decide. I mean, the, the, the easy thing to do would be put two big massive trees right here and some bushes in the front. That would be easy, right? Be the easy thing. Not necessarily want to go that soft on this old guy. All right, so we're going to come over here. Let's take, I love how those trees look over there. So let's come out here. We're going to come up into the, tree, uh, the snow line a little bit, come down below our water line and sit him right down there into the water okay now what if we come up here and we start tapping with our brush little teeny tiny taps and the more that you go down the more you start pushing onto your brush the fat the more of the brush starts contacting the canvas right and then you start bouncing back and forth and your tree base gets a little bit fatter right just like we all do as we get older get a little fatter i think everybody does maybe it's just me i don't know maybe all right we'll come over here again let's bring in 
Oh, you guys. Oh, no, I can't do it. Oh, I was going to put a waterfall on this thing, but it's just not. It might work. A waterfall might work. No, it's not going to work, Josh. How can you fit a waterfall back into here? Maybe down off the bottom, perhaps. But if that's the case, we're going to need to make this guy a lot taller. So let's come down a bit more. Down, down, down on both sides, right? Just bringing his bum down here into the opening. Maybe we could rock some water off that way. Well, we'll see. We'll see. By the time we get there, I may change my mind. He might change my mind. So maybe over here, let's do a little bit bigger of a guy on a little lean right down through everything right next to the end of the leaves. You want the trunk at the end of the branches, and that way they can overlap. You don't want them out there touching tips. You want them overlapping like they're holding hands, right? You gotta be close to hold hands. You wanna be way out there like this, trying to hold hands. You wanna be nice and tucked in, and that way you only really have to paint the left side of this tree. It's the only one that's really standing out, just like that. Very cool. Now, we're gonna save one big spot for our guy in the front. So let's see what we would look like if we added just a little touch of land right in here. If we started pulling out our trees, sliding it out, maybe we got a little bit of a of an island right out here. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Let's have a little island out there, right? Pulling a little bit higher from the left, going down a little bit as we get down here, and then higher up as we come over here, make our trees have that little V shape, helps them make them look more 3D. Okay, right like that. Maybe we will be able to just pull off that lot of the littlest waterfall. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna have it come right here. Right down there and into that bit. Maybe not. It looks really cool, though. Okay, let's decide where's all of our light coming from. All of our light is coming from the left. So we're going to take our bit of white and slap it on right over here. Right down like that. We're obviously not going to hit every single bit of our little snowy thing. It would be all in white. We'll have to switch to that blue snow that we had created, that very light bluey snow. And that, mixed off the other edge, going the other direction, will look like... A little shadow, you guys. Just a little shadowy mix. There's that blue. There we go. Off the side, over here. How far do you want to make it? You know what I mean? How big do you want your little island? Or is it an island or is it not? The more that we pull it to the side, the less it becomes an island and the more it becomes attached. To now there's a bit of land down here. All right, how far do you want your island or your bit of land to grow? You gotta remember. We're going to be putting a whole other big tree in here, too. You know what? We're not doing... I'm not going to do a waterfall. This one looks so nice right here, especially if we can get all these pink colors with the greeny, snowy bits. We'll have a whole little piece of land coming out here. Okay, now, off with our blue snow again. Off on the other side, going the other way. Just like a little lip and come up like this. Down that way, right? Not everyone has to be exactly the same. Alright, just like that. We got a whole other little field of snow out here. Ho 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 ho, that looks cool. Alright, the more we come down this way, we'll have a little cove. Just a little cove down there. We can come all the way down if you wanted to. This little lake, a little patch of snow, just stuck right out here, right in our faces. It's like, hello, Frisco! <laughs> right out here in my face. Bang, bang, bang. I love those little ridges. Leave that little dark separator in between, though. You got to, otherwise it's going to look all funky. It's going to look all strange if you don't have that dark separation in between. Just like that. Remember, our light can't reach everywhere. We don't need it to go every single wear, either. The closer we come down to us, the more white we put on the brush, so it gets a little bit brighter, a little whiter. Very nice. <laughs> All right, now, let's mix up just a little bit more. It's like Goofy falling down a well. <laughs> I'm a madman. All right, we're going to come over here, mix up a little bit more of the madness mix in equal colors. So, speaking of madness, madman, what three colors are we going to mix in order to create all this deep, dark, blackish, purplish black color that's going to stand out from all the other colors everywhere else on this painting? That is awesome. <laughs> I really like that. You know what, too? We're going to have a whole other little... Like a tree right there. Just a whole little piece of lake out here. It's going to be cool. Just right my my favorite fishing spot out here is what it, what it looks like. Do a little night fishing. 
little night fishing under the auroras. Boy, count me in. I'm there. Let's do it. All right, what are we looking at, guys? What are we looking at? Oh, this one's looking fantastic, let me tell you. Thank you for all the follows on uh, TikTok, guys. Cha ching Holy cow, it says Tim just ordered this painting, you guys. Cha ching Hey, where's my noisemaker? Noisemaker. Hey, ho, let's go, everybody. All right. Excellent. Cha ching Tim loves the winter paintings. You can't get him away from them. Can't get him away. All right, now let's put a little bit of white, a little bit of brown. Got to get the skin off of that brown. A little touch, and we'll make a bit of our tree trunky section thing. Now, we don't want to have too much white, and we don't need too many little trunks for our tree. We'll touch a little bit, a little bit. All right, and then when we go back in and cover over these guys with a bit of highlights and stuff, most of the trunk will disappear purposefully, okay? Now, let's go back in. We've got that giant pile of paint mixed up. You guys know why. There's two big old trees coming in on this little painting. Are you ready? At least one on this left side. Are you ready for it? You gotta let me know in the comments. Say so yes, I'm ready for a giant. Just a, an enormous tree with a lot of paint on the brush. Let's come down from up here. Straight down. The more you go down, the more you can push in. So don't worry about floating it all the way down. Now, what makes this tree stand out as being closer than those other trees in the background. All right, what makes this guy? You can't say it's the color, because they're all the same color. So, you can't tell me it's that. Right, I'm coming, I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way as much as possible, but now also, I have to make a painting that's worth the amount of money that Tim just paid for this painting. So, I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do the one side first, and then I'll show you how to do this other side. So if my arm gets in the way, just give me a second. We're gonna go from the trunk, outwards on the one side, leaving the whole right side unpainted, okay? I'll show you just how far you can get crazy with this guy. Bing, bang, boom, boom, boom. I tend to do this one very fast because a lot of people can't see based on where my hand is and where the brush is. It makes it difficult for you to see, and I understand. So I try to blast through this time. And just do it on this one side, and then I'll really show you when we come back on the, uh, on the other side of the tree. Look at how much paint is right there. Oh my God. That's a 22-inch tree. Good heavens. That's so much paint right here that we don't even have any more to paint with. So we gotta come back and mix the colors up again, you guys. So what three colors do we mix? I might run out of crimson paint. Glad I got some from Michael's today. What three colors do we mix up in order to create a deep, dark color? The Paint With Josh Madness mix. Black. Purplish, blackish color. What three colors is it? Because it's not just black. And it's not just the Bob Ross Mountain mix, because that's just lazy too, right? What three colors do we mix up? And then I'm going to show you as we load up this brush with all sorts of paint. Now, as we come over here, okay, we're going to be hitting the trunk of the tree and just tapping out a few times. And the more that you go down, the more you tap out. And the more that you pop, you flip the brush over, and now it's real thick and textury again. The more you come down, the more you pop out, and pop out, and pop out, until you're about two full lengths away down here at the bottom, okay? Which means you're hitting it and then you're bouncing away two full times. So down, by the time we get down here, our whole tree is gonna be all the way nearly off the canvas, okay? Now, this is why we make up so much pile of paint, because you need it, again, going away from the tree trunk, out towards the side, creating all of our little branchy bits Boom, 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 boom. Look at the size of this monster. He's a monster tree. You've seen monster trucks. This is a monster tree. Boom, boom, boom. The more we go the down, the more and more and more wide our little tree gets. Getting closer and closer and closer to us because he's so massive. He's so humongous. I'm gonna put the littlest dab right up there. Boop, little baby bits. Oh, I love him. Oh, I just love him to death. He's my favorite. Now, the more that you tap on this guy, the more of our little fingery things are going to disappear. And that's not what you want to have. You want to have all those fingery bits. So don't mush it so many times that you end up getting rid of all those fingery bits because that's a no-go. It is not good. You want to have all those little bits. And if you're, if you're wondering like, what fingery bits, what's he talking about? Right? You know when you push the canvas, you push the paint against the canvas, goes like that, and then when you slide it apart, 
Oh, sorry, I thought I had another sail on it. When you hit it and then you, you pull it apart and all the fingertips, right, the paint tries to stick onto itself, all those little textury pieces, that's what you want to have on them trees back there. Now, we need to switch brushes to a much smaller brush. And that's the secret to paint with Josh trees. We're going to make the tree with a big old giant brush. And then we go back with a little tiny baby. We highlight those trees, right? And I'll show you the difference between the brushes. Let me just get it all cleaned off here. It's all so overly filled with paint, it's almost too hard to use. Okay, we've got our big giant, size 14, size 10, size whatever, because every manufacturer is different. And then we got a little teeny tiny guy that you could probably fit two and a half or maybe even three times inside the big brush. Okay, now when we go to highlight our trees, they're going to look really cool. Firstly, let's grab this dude, give him a bit of land to sit on back here. And then pulling it off in each direction, so you slide it back that way. And off the one side, pulling it down at that angle, so the angle's like this. It's not, it's not straight across, it's at a little angle. And then you come a little bit higher up here, pull this guy back towards that little angle, and now we've got two different, way, uh, two different angles, pulling two different ways. Okay, take our bit of blue that we had, a little bit of blue down in here, a little teeny tiny bit of white just to light it up, just a little, just a touch, there we go. Got to have that bluey bit. You can see that downward angle. Now we grab more of the white on the brush, pull it off this way, and then you've got your little ridge, a snowy deal right here, coming across to play with his little pal right there. Just like that. Right? However you want it. You want to have a little hill right here, going off the other side. How do you want to play with yours? All right. I like sweeping against mine like that, so it gives little drag marks like the wind is legit blowing the snow and it's dragging across the top just with a little bit of extra pressure on our brush not trying just trying to to deposit a few little streaks right just to have it make it look like the wind is like just whipping stuff off whipping it over all right now remember guys glitter wicks is going to be coming to paint and pour coming to paint she'll be coming to pour her candles uh, any outstanding orders that you have for Glitterwick, she's going to be on at 8 o'clock, right when I finish this show. I'm going to try to be on, uh, done on time. So right when I finish this show, we're all going to head over to Glitterwick's stream, and she's going to do something for us that's just going to be amazing. So she better, has way better colors than I do, if you ask me. She's the artist. All right, let's come over here. And now in order to make all of these thick paints stick to each other, we need to thin it down with our... Bob Ross liquid white, right? You don't necessarily have to have this exactly. You could use odorless mineral spirits. You could use linseed oil. You could use whatever you want, but I like to use this stuff. Now, I have a little Petri dish, I like to call it, because I don't want to contaminate my jar. So let me get a little into my Petri dish, and then I'll show you what it looks like. And you'll be able to see just why I call it a Petri dish, because something's got to be growing in there by now, I would imagine. I would imagine it's foul. All right, let's come over here. I'm over there. Got that. Here's the Petri dish, right? All it is is a little, it's the lid to a liquid white jar with liquid white and like tons of other dried liquid white that's been in there forever. And that way I can dip color from my brush into that little lid and not have to contaminate my jar. I don't want to contaminate a whole brand new jar with blue color if I need to just grab a little touch more, right? So we get a little bit onto the end of our brush and come out here into our Prussian blue. And the liquid white is not only very bright white, right? But it's very runny. And so it takes these big thick paints and turns them into very thin little paints that will then come off of our brush with the tiniest touch. And so as you come back here and you start filling up little pieces of our tree, remembering where all of our little branches would be back in here, right? Over there, over there, the more you go, the more little dark areas you're going to try to cover. And I'm here to tell you, if you cover every dark branch, I will come for you in the night. No, I'm just kidding. But your tree is going to look very flat, okay? You need to leave more dark areas than colored areas. Now, I like to say it like this. Let's say we're out here with the dog... And we threw the frisbee and it went right into the tree. And you're like, oh, the dog can't get to it. Now you've got to go get the tree, uh, get the thing out of the tree, right? So you're not going to want to stick your hand into this ice cold, snowy pile to pull out the thing. What are you going to do? You're going to look for a place where you can get underneath 
and then grab the frisbee and pull it out without getting your hand too wet or scratched up from all the branches, right? So you have to leave a little dark area in between each of these little taps. Not every tap has to be 100% uh, the same color or touching or anything, right? Go over a little bit of our trunk, just like that. You can see all the little dark separators that we've left in between there, right? You can't have every piece be covered in snow. You've got to be able to reach inside and grab the trunk. And how are we going to do that? We're going to look for a place that doesn't have a lot of snow on it and sneak our hand up inside there and grab it. At least that's what I'm going to do. I don't know about you guys, okay? Now, come over here off of the back side of this guy. Again, even with this gigantic tree, we're coming at it with this little tiny brush. Now, it's going to take maybe a few more times to get the amount of branches that we want on this tree because the brush is so small. All right, we're coming down, only covering half, contacting all that brush. Look at the color that comes off of there, right? And it sticks onto our, our brush. So we need to rotate it over to the fresh side. Now, when you do that, start out on the edge and be very light-handed because it's going to deposit a whole bunch of bright blue paint. The more you work down and the more it deposits this darkness onto our brush, the easier it is to try to go push hard on it again when you got a brand new fresh brush and that's not going to work for you. All right, come down, smack a little bit harder as we get down here to the bottom. We forgot to put a trunk in this guy, but he's okay. Maybe we could still sneak him in, just a little piece here, a little piece there, a little piece there, just little bits. You don't need the whole thing to show. Hey, just like that, right? Now, we go over just a few times, a couple taps, Tap here, two taps there, maybe one up top. And that way we've still left all these dark, dark, dark spaces in our painting. Because that's what you gotta have, guys. You gotta have the darkness. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys something really special. I was gonna save this, but I might just do it next, on this next live. Oh, I can't even grab it because I don't want to get any paint on it. Just, just stick with me until the end, okay? I got a, an awesome idea that's already ready to go and uh, I think you guys are really, really gonna like it. So just stick with me to the end until I can take these off and then I'll grab it and I'll show you. Now, we need to add our white highlights to our tree, right? So let's go back in. We've washed off our brush, we come back here, we get a little bit of that liquid white and a little bit of our titanium white and just kind of have them mixed together right here. All right, the liquid white makes the titanium white very sloppy and wet and it will come off of our brush very easily with just the smallest touch now again. We're not trying to cover every single piece of all the darkness on our tree, right? We're not trying to make every bit of branch touch. We're not trying to have every piece be as bright as every other piece. And as we come back and kind of fill in towards the trunky bit, look at how it starts to light up, guys. Isn't that fantastic? Like, honestly, now we've contacted a lot of brush. And so we're having to push harder, which not only smushes our little details, right? But takes more paint off of our brush, making it darker and darker and darker. Now, we're gonna wash the brush. Let's come back in here. A Little bit more of our liquid white. Little bit, you can always go back and add more, right? Little teeny bit, right here into the titanium white. Now, can you just use titanium white? Or vice versa, can you just use liquid white on its own? Or do you need to have them both? You need both of them babies. Oh man, holy moly, holy heavens, that's a cool looking tree. Already. Okay, we're gonna come down here. I'm gonna tap in a little baby bits as we come out towards the side. Tapping, 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 tapping. Over there, over there, right? Working it back in, out on the edges. Sometimes you pick up a little bit more paint, a little bit more light out there. Flip our brush over, very light little touches on the very first few because they come off so brightly compared to what it was and where it worked itself down. Now, our places down around the bottom, they don't need to be as bright as everywhere else. Just like that, though, you build that depthful tree, right? Little places across our shadowy bits we can hit just a couple times with that light, and it makes it look like the light's trying to reach around the tree. Make it look a lot cooler like that. Add it out, add it out. A couple little bits here and there and everywhere. And all of a sudden, we've got this really, really cool little tree out here in the night in the night really neat now let's go back underneath this guy a little bit of darkness underneath him and you can see when you put on that bit of white just how much darkness you need to have back underneath 
to make it look more filled with depth, right? The white and the dark, if they mix too much, they don't look right. You're just not going to be happy with it. You just won't be happy. Very cool. Little places cross into our shadow. Bang, bang, bang. Look at all those little things where we have to literally reach around, reach through, and grab the trunk. Because that's the goal. You don't want to put so much snow on it that you can't grab the trunk. Go up here, little tap off the backside, very light little touches. Just the corner of the brush contacting at first. And this guy we don't come all the way down on. He's kind of hidden back here behind his friend in the shadows. So we'll come back off of his friend over here. Tap on this guy, little taps, barely contacting in the beginning. Little teeny taps. Nothing too crazy, my friends. The more that we go down, the more we're tapping onto the canvas. Right, we're turning the brush, we're making more little branches, we're coming over into our shadowy side. Boom, boom, boom. A couple of little bits. Oh, baby, that's cool. I like that one right there, guys. I like it. Mr. Tim, what do you think about it? You guys are gonna have to start telling Tim what we're gonna name this painting, because it's up to him. It's up to him, old Tim, because he gets to name this painting. A little bit of a cove back in here. We can just work one in. Just a little, little Kobe bit. Very cool, guys. Very cool. Brush these out a bit more so they dry a bit faster for old Tim. Bang, bang, boom. If it's very thick, it'll take a long old time to dry. Very cool, you guys. Oh, I love it. I just love it. But we're not done. Oh, Josh. We still got some extra paint and some just three minutes of extra time. So remember, if you're going to head over to the Glitterwix stream, right? We're gonna put one last guy in right here. Right down there, this lonesome tree. Boom, boom, boom. So head over to the Glitterwix stream at nine o'clock, right? She's gonna start at nine. And then I'll be back on at uh, what? Uh, Oh, she's going to start at 8. Uh, excuse me. She's going to start at 8, and then I'll probably be back on at 9 since this painting sold. So we're going to plop this guy down right here. I'm going to add, like, two branches to him, and then we're going to make Tim pick a title. So, Tim, what do you think we should call your gorgeous little painting right here? you got to let us know in the comments. Oh, man. That's cool. Woo! Baby. Slide that guy over that way. You can pull him over this way. Have his little shadow go out that side. Right, however you want it to be. Very neat. Now, let's go back here with our long liner brush. Tim's got to give me a name for this painting. And we're all going to get ready to go watch London from Glitterwix make the most amazing, gorgeous candles you've ever seen. So if you don't know, follow Glitterwix. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok. They're on YouTube. Follow them. If you want to see some really cool candle type videos, right? And not only that, they're custom, dude. They smell amazing. She's got like 50, 65 cents, something like that. So if you love candles just as much as old paint with Josh does, I literally have one burning nonstop in my house. Ask me, it's on the counter right now, the bread one. And it smells amazing. A piece off of that guy. This paint with brand brush, dude, you can't beat it, I'm telling you. Cannot beat it with the lamp black paint from Eden. Just impossible to beat. Branchy tree out here. Very cool. Very cool, you guys. So it's just about nine o'clock, uh, just about eight o'clock. Get over there to Glitterwix's stream, and I'll be back in a little bit. I promise. I promise. This one's looking so cool. All right, let's get a little bit of white just real fast on the edge of our guy over here. Keep going all the way up. And always go back. Tap over him again. Tap, 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 tap. Little taps. Don't need the entire bit of tree to be covered in this white kind of barky thing. Right? A little barky. Make it a couple little bigger taps around the bottom. You still have that dark side. Very cool. Looks like very thick bark. Just so neat. Oh, I love him. Oh. He's fantastic. He is just fantastic. So, a little bit here, a little bit there. A little touch. Not every piece has to be the same amount of 
brightness coming off of the tree and not every branch is going to have the same amount of white on it or anything like that so don't worry about what it looks like just touch a few here and there there and here what are you going to do bing bang boom it just helps guide your eye out towards the tip of the tree just like that you guys all right let's see tim are you going to keep your spinny winny wheel gift or are you going to gift it to somebody in the comments that's the question and did we make it to 500,000 taps on TikTok? Because if we did, then we're going to be giving away a free gift to somebody in the comments as well. If we didn't make it to 500,000 taps, I don't, ooh, we're way away from 500,000 taps. Ouch. Oh, yeah, I get to pick the name? I like Cosmic Encounter. That's kind of cool. Lake Alfred. I like that. Winter Sunset. What are we going to name this one, guy? Guys. <laughs> Mountain Stream. Aurora's Night. Let's see. Does that say Josh and London are the reason I stay up past my bedtime every night? I'm sorry. Ooh, Electric Lake. Oh, what'd someone say? Did someone say night fishing right here? Abby G. All right. Abby G's in the lead, guys. Abby G uh, with night fishing. That's in the lead. We got to come up with something. Remember I said this would be a perfect place to go down and night fish? Didn't I say that? Were you guys paying attention when I said that? So she's in the lead for picking the name for Tim's painting right now. Nightfish, lake nightfish. I, I don't know. Something, something to do with night fishing, guys. You got to do better than that if you want to be in the top spot. Otherwise, night fishing is going to be the title. Night dancer into the darkest hour. Ooh, you guys are really good at naming paintings, I swear. Night serenade. Solitude Salmon Lake. Dude. All right, guys. I got to give it to Brett L. Dar over there on Facebook. Salmon Lake. You want to know why? Because of the pink salmon -y lake. I like it. I like your thinking, dude. I like it. Plus, we never give it to people over on, uh, over on Facebook. So, Brett L. Dar. I hope you follow me over on Facebook. I would imagine you do. We've only got like 720,000 followers on Facebook. I would think you're probably one of them. And you just named... Paint with Josh painting number 1091. What do we name it? I forget already. Shoot, I know, I seriously forgot. What, what was the name again? Guys, did we... Oh, Salmon Lake, right? No. Was that it? Was it Salmon Lake? I forget now. Oh, I'm so bad at it. Yeah, okay, Salmon Lake. My Brett. Salmon Lake. I like that, dude. I... Like it. Salmon Lake. Painted on 112 of 2024. And we're not only going to go to paintwithjosh.com, but we're going to go to glitterwix.com in order to find the most amazing candles you've ever seen in your life. And she's probably live right now, so get over there and, uh, and check her show out. Go now. Don't stay. If you love candles, go. Get over there now. Over on TikTok, look for her under the name Glitterwix. And that's going to be fantastic. So we're going to throw the old family in here real quick. Sign this old guy. It's always fun when Paint with Josh gets to pick the name. I like that. I like choosing the name. Every so often. We'll come in here, light up the fam. Ka -ka! Like that. <laughs> I'm going to choke if I try to do that too loudly. I'm trying to get over being sick. <laughs> All right, now let's sign this old thing. Here we go. No, it's not, I always say that. Let's sign this old thing. It's literally brand new. I don't even know why I'm holding my mall stick. I don't need it. Over here, just like this, guys. Gorgeous little 24 by 24 inch that now has a brand new owner named Tim. And it turned out fantastic, if you ask me, Tim. So, let's spin the old spinny winny wheel for Tim. And then we're going to get over to London's show. Uh, let me... I, let me, I gotta, There's too many things going on. So let me end the, um, the YouTube channel. Well, I, I, Tim's probably watching on YouTube, so let's not do that. Tim, are you watching over on YouTube? He is. Of course he is. And he's going to donate the wheel. Who are you going to give the wheel to, Tim? You want me to pick at a random... I can pick a random person if you want. He's going to donate the wheel. What a nice guy. 
No, Glitter Wicks, W-I-C-K-S. W-I-C-K-S, like the wick in a candle. She does glittery candles, so glitter wicks, like you would have a candle wick, you know what I mean? All right, Tim, am I gonna choose? Hi, Kara Patillo, thank you for tuning in and being with us today. Oh, Aries Fairies, let me know on TikTok. All right, all right, guys, I'm gonna pick then for Tim. You guys all say in the comments, me, 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 all right? And then I'm gonna scroll back up, stop with my eyes closed, and that'll be whoever wins this painting. Oh, uh, well, not this painting, excuse me. Whoever wins the free Spinny Winnie Wheel gift. All right, here we go. There's 771 people watching over on, uh, on TikTok. We got a couple people watching over on Facebook as well, about 61. So you guys hit it up over there, and we're going to go through the comments. Let's see. My paintings start at 250 and go up from there for the person asking. Okay, here we go. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Stop. Jennifer Gallagher. Jennifer Gallagher over there on TikTok. Right there, guys. Ended up being perfect. Jennifer Gallagher, you just won the free Spinny Winnie Wheel from Tim because he's the man. And uh, he usually buys paintings and usually donates his spin. So if you've never seen the Spinny Winnie Wheel before, this is what it looks like. And remember, get over to Glitterwix to go check out their stream right after this. I might have to back you guys up just a touch. No, I think you'd be all right. Okay, here we go with the spin. Coming up for one, two, three. What's it gonna be? What are we gonna look like? Oh man, it's my lucky day. No, I can't win. It can't be Paint With Josh wins if it's a donated spin. All right, we'll give you another one. I gotta go to the casino though, seriously. I keep winning on this. Are you serious? Two Paint With Josh wins in a row? This can't be possible. Let's go again. Oh, that's a bad spin. Hang on. There we go. That's a bad spin, too, but... Paint With Josh t-shirt. I'll take it. Anything except Paint With Josh wins. So, you just want a Paint With Josh t-shirt, and it literally says on the back, like, I won this shirt from the Spinny Winnie Wheel. It's really funny. I like it. It's really cool. So, two spin, three spins, actually, for Jennifer Gallagher from Tim... And, uh, yeah, I hope, uh, you know, Jennifer, you got to send me a message. Okay, if you don't contact me, then uh, I'm not going to come looking for you to give you something for free, okay? So Jennifer over on TikTok, and she got the T-shirt. Okay, guys, let's end the show. I'm going to say goodbye to the Facebook camera and the YouTube camera, and then we'll end it over on TikTok last, okay? So I love you guys over on YouTube. Can't wait to see your version of this painting. Came out amazing. I love everything about it. And uh, send them to me on Facebook or Instagram. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bah, bah, just crazy. Love you guys.